Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Skin Effect in RAC. Please know the acknowledgement to stat. Copper losses are due to the resistance of the wire. If we have a wire, there's a current flowing in it. There's going to be some conduction losses. But the losses are a function of frequency because at high frequency, there is a skin effect in which the carriers, the electrons in the case of a conductor, are pushed to the outer brim of the wire. So therefore the cross-section area, the effective area available for conduction is smaller and therefore the resistance would be higher. So the total loss of a current flowing through an inductor, if there is a DC component and an AC component, then it'll be the square of the DC times the DC resistance, which depends on the total cross-section, and IRMS times RAC, which depends on the outer belt here in which carriers are present. Now there is an approximate expression uh, for the skin thickness. Now there is an approximate expression for the skin thickness and that's 72 over square root of F, F is in Hertz, and this value here is in millimeters. So if we look at the RAC over RDC expression, RAC is the resistance due to this section here, RDC is due to the whole area. Now the conductance is a fun function of area. The larger the area, the larger the conductance, and the resistance is one over conductance. So therefore, RAC over RDC will be the area of the skin depth of the ring, that is this belt area, will be in the denominator, over the, and then we'll have in the uh, numerator, the cross-section area, the total cross-section area because one over this is the resistance here, and one over this is the resistance of the whole area. So therefore, we have here, this is the cr total cross area, and here, this is an approximation in which I've taken the length here, the length, and multiplied it, the length is pi d, multiplied by the thickness. It's an approximation, of course, and therefore we find that the RAC over RDC is D, this is the diameter, uh, times square root of F of 472. It's this form of an expression for RAC over RDC. Now, the total resistance will be our, uh, sum of these, and if I'll sum it up, I'll find that I have an expression of this nature, which if I plot it in a log log graph, I'll find here, this will be the RDC, and this is where the RAC becomes larger than the RDC, and here we're expecting a slope of 0.5 in a log log um, graph. Now there's a more accurate way to estimate the RAC, and that will be to actually calculate more accurately this area here, this belt here. And this will be done by taking the total area and subtracting from it this inner circle here, inner area, the diameter of which is d minus 2 delta, because we have delta here and delta here, so this is d minus 2 delta. So therefore this area here is pi d square and this is the new or oh, the smaller diameter and since uh, RAC is proportional to 1 over this area we find uh, this expression. This k is sort of the conductivity or, or resistivity of the copper or the conductor and here we have uh, the approximate expression for the skin depth. Now we have tested this by taking a wire, which is a 0.25 millimeter diameter, 
and wound it on a piece of uh, plastic here. And we are careful to do two things. Number one is to minimize inductance by having this a very thin, or relatively thin uh, piece of plastic here, and then winding the wires at a distance one from the other in order to reduce the capacitance. So this then was measured by the network analyzer by Omicron, the body 100. This is the instrument. And this is the fixture for measuring capacitors and inductors or resistors by this uh, analyzer. It's a uh, compatible unit to the analyzer. And here, the way it is uh, plugged in, these are two slots that you put the uh, two legs. And here we have this uh, wire that we wrapped around this uh, plastic uh, piece. And here are the results. So first of all, we see that indeed we get a fairly low uh, inductance that's uh, below one microhenry. And indeed, we do have a constant, just about constant resistance up to say one megahertz or a little bit less than that, uh, 0.3 ohms, 300 milliohms, and this is consistent with this uh, low frequency resistance or conductance. And then at this point we start to see a rise, and if this is a curved uh, line here, if I take just the slope here, just in the middle here, I find that the slope is in the 0.5. So this is the way our AC looks. This is the actual behavior of a wire, when exposed to a, a high frequency. Now, in this case, just taking two points here on the uh, asymptotic line, one megahertz and 10 megahertz, we find that here 10 megahertz about one ohm, and at one megahertz, it's about 0.3 ohms. Now, I've done the calculation, the more accurate calculation. This is the equation k over d square, etc. Now I have adjusted k to be uh, fitting uh, the data, this k here. And here indeed we see the behavior. We see here the rise here between 0.3 at 1 megahertz to 10 megahertz 1 ohm, which is exactly what we got. And what we see here, that there is a further reduction and here, however, something goes wrong, and this is because in this region, of course, the calculation is incorrect because the two delta is larger than D, and this is, of course, violating the physical situation. So in this area here, where we look at our AC, everything looks very nice and very consistent uh, in what we understand and what we measure. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you.